total float is another 14 point assessment. And what it's looking at is the field called total slack. This column is created and calculated based on your relationships. If there's zero float, that's how you find out your critical path. But if you definitely have more than one predecessor or successor to a task, you're gonna have some kind of float in there because one will be the driver, one will not. So there might be some float in there. The reason why DCMA checks this is because if you're linking just so that you can bypass the logic metric that says you have to have a predecessor and successor and you link something that's way over here to something way over here because you don't know what else it links to, it's gonna say that slack, there's a lot of slack in there because you don't know what's going on. So is it, it's questioning, are those tasks really related or is there something else in the middle? So DCMA looks at how much slack there is. So if there's more than 44 days, which is two months of slack, it triggers this metric. It makes you go and question the logic of what you really have tied to, because if there is more than 44 days of slack, there's definitely probably another task you can link it to that is dependent on it. So it just makes you think through the logic. So a recap on this metric of high float is you're identifying tasks that have high float. DCMA has the metric saying that nothing can have float that is greater than 44 days. Why is this important? Because if you have tasks that have float that is greater than the two months, it just means that it may not be linked properly to another task. So this metric just makes you think through your logic. Yes, you could be passing metric one of the logic saying yes, every task has a predecessor and successor, but this metric makes you look at, did you link it properly? Is it linked to the right one? The field used for this is your total slack field. So you're gonna walk through that one and then you're gonna count how many incomplete tasks have a total slack that is greater than 44 days. Take that count and divide it by the count of incomplete task. The goal for this metric is you want to be less than 5% of your tasks that have a high float. Here's an example of high float. So you have a waterfall of tasks that gets to your project completion, but then you've got these one and two tasks that are out here that one is starting at the same time as your very first task, but it's linked to your project end, that very final milestone to say your project is complete. And then there's another one that's three in and it's linked to your project completion as well. So that high float is that green arrow right there saying you have all those days in between when that task completes until it's needed, essentially. It's saying, are you sure that task is not needed somewhere else? Is it really just you did it the first thing and then it's done? And same with the second one. That's all it was needed for is like, yeah, you started it after three, but then it's linked to the project end. Are you sure there's nothing else it needs to be linked to that's critical, that no other task needs it? It's just floating there all by itself. This makes you think through it because it's saying, yes, there's a big, large quantity of float. And are you sure it's linked to the right task? That's why you have the margin. If that's really what it is, then that's fine. It's allowed but you just have to think through, did you link things properly? Yes, you might've passed the first metric of logic, but is it right? A way to fix this is think through your logic and say, no, that task really is needed for this task, task number four. And then the other one is really needed for task number five. That now just shrunk your total float to be less than the 44 days. And it's realistic of what it is that you needed through. So that's a way to fix it. It just makes you think what's, really the drivers and how are things linked and related to each other. The point of this metric is just making sure your links are accurate. The first one, make sure that you do have links. This one's saying, did you link it to the right thing? So an example of this is you have 176 tasks that have float that is greater than 44 days. And the amount of incomplete tasks you have is 441. So that's 176 divided by 441 is 33%. And that's over your margin. So you need to reduce that down and work to getting below the margin. This metric is looking at your total slack column. You want your slack to be below two months. And if it's not, you just need to look at the relationships. So in this instance, I have nothing that has less than 44 days of slack. So everything would be tripping on this metric. But what it is, is I'm going to pick the highest one. And I'm going to click that and say, okay, it's HVAC. It's saying that I have 259 days of slack before it's needed. Well, what is it related to? If I click on this, it's saying, okay, we have to install the events. 
I'm gonna go then look at the HVAC section. Why is there so much time? You can see here that it's saying that having the returns and outside vents installed for HVAC isn't required until move-in. Well, that's why I have such a big slack. Move-in is far away. And this city inspection, that's just a compound of this 127 days and then the slack between the inspection and this. So it makes me wonder, like, do I really have to start this soon? Am I, is the relationship correct? Did I start too early? And is that really what the driver is? I don't know in this situation is, does HVAC, is it required to be done by a certain time other than moving in? That's what I need to ask to say, is there a requirement to make sure that this task is done prior to this or is it really that much slack? If so, it's okay if you do have that much slack. Again, DCMA's metric is just making you question the logic. If this is correct and it says, yes, you have that much slack, then you know you do and you can slip the task by that many days. But you really do want to narrow it down and control how much slack you have. So try and narrow that down. Try and find the correct relationships between the tasks to get that total slack down. So a recap of this metric is you're looking for tasks that have high float. You're going to be looking at your total slack column and anything that is greater than 44 days, you need to go back and look at the relationships and how they're connected. What is that logic? And try to make sure that there's nothing else that those tasks could be really dependent on because when you start narrowing down that total float, you're going to have better relationships in your task and then you can see the effects in your what if drills that you're creating. Just make sure that no more than 5% of your task have high float. You're allowed to have some. Sometimes that's the only thing that it's linked to and that's okay but just make sure it's not your entire schedule and it's only 5%.